I'm going to make some people mad at me today. I'm going to make some subscribers mad at me today. Just remember, this is my opinion. This is simply my opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions. All because somebody has an opinion that you don't agree with doesn't make you an ist or a hater or whatever isms that everyone likes to put onto things. You know, there's a thing called respect. And you can respect someone's opinion without agreeing with their opinion, without thinking, you know, eh, that doesn't really work for me, but this is someone else's opinion, that's fine. But there's a, a growing mindset that seems to be happening within the, the video game industry right now that is just beyond me. I completely do not understand it. And I want to tell you guys why I don't understand it and try to find maybe some middle ground or something like this because I like to read comments. You know, I might not reply to all my comments on my videos or videos that I've been featured in, but I like to read them. I like to see, you know, what, what everyone's thinking about something because to me, a comment section of a video is not for me. You know, I've made my point in the video that I made. The whole point of a comment section is for other people to give their opinions and talk with other people that maybe have a, a likewise mentality or maybe have a different mentality. And that that's the beauty of a comment section. You shouldn't get necessarily angry at it. Just learn why other people feel a certain way. And th that's something that we're going to be talking a lot about in this video is, is feeling because we've gotten to a point in society where you can have numerical data, you can have business data, you can have all sorts of information, but we feel a certain way and we feel and the feelings should be able to trump the other things. And those are more important than actual data. And this, of course, is all stemming from console exclusives being anti-consumer, which was a topic that we talked about on the spawn cast saturday night and so many people in those comment sections were like these old guys have this old mentality and they just don't get it console exclusives are holding back the video game industry console exclusives are the worst thing for the video game industry and i'm like i respect your opinion you're allowed to have your own opinion but I don't agree with your opinion. That doesn't mean that I'm trying to belittle you or something like that. I don't agree with your opinion because you have to look at the video game industry as a whole. You have to look at where video games have come from. I'm an older guy. I'm 37. Okay. I grew up with the rise of video games. When the NES started becoming a big thing in the United States back in 1985, I was born in 1985. Hence, rgt85 so i have seen the meteoric rise of this industry from something niche and fringe not jordan fringe to something that is you know accepted it, it's commonplace everyone plays video games nowadays it's not like you have to be some weird nerd you know dwelling in your basement playing video games it's not like you have to be ashamed about playing video games and loving video games it's a socially accepted thing but with this rise we've seen console exclusives are anti-consumer and i i don't understand that mentality i don't because when you go back to you know when console exclusives started happening you have to remember with the with the nes okay on the nes side of things nintendo had strict laws with companies that wouldn't allow them to make sega master system games okay if you made third party games you could only make it on nintendo platforms in the united states so because of this you had arguably the most anti-consumer thing because you only had one system to play. You only had one version of a game on one system and there wasn't any sort of competition. Now, of course, in Europe, this was not the case. And when you look at the Sega Master System library of games compared to Europe and the United States, it's, it's a night and day difference. You know, there's so many awesome games that were stuck in Europe because of Nintendo's anti-consumer mindset of only allowing companies to make on one platform of course as video games have come along and video games have risen you had that 16-bit era where you would have multi-platform games and this ended up becoming a very big thing third-party developers were making games for both the sega genesis and the super nintendo sometimes the games were the exact same game title but they were completely different experiences look at something like aladdin on the genesis versus aladdin on the super nintendo wildly different games still based within the aladdin universe and it boiled down to which version of the game did you like better me personally the sega genesis version is superior i don't understand why people love the the super nintendo one more so than the genesis but that's just their opinion that's just their opinion they can feel however they want but their feelings are not going to change my mentality and back then we never said things like oh man 
I really wish I could have this particular game on my platform. Why is it only on the other platform? Why Why don't things work in the way I want to work? We, we never really said that. We just accepted it. We understood how things work in life and th this new mindset this new mentality of people where everything should be kumbaya you shouldn't have to work for anything in life everything should just be handed to you and everything should be available to you and only you and everyone around you it, 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 it's beyond me it's beyond me because even back with the xbox 360 and the playstation 3 and the wii Yes, there were console exclusives for those games. Yes, there were first-party console exclusives. Yes, there were third-party console exclusives for those systems. And you know what? If you wanted to play those games, you bought the damn system. And yes, oh, well, who can afford all this stuff? Life's not fair, blah, blah, blah. You know what I did? Okay, when, when uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 came out on the PlayStation 3, I had an Xbox 360 that I had saved up money to buy. And I was in my early 20s, and... Metal Gear Solid 4 came out for the PlayStation 3, and I said to myself at that point in time, I need to buy that bundle that they're releasing, but I can't afford it. So you know what I did? I walked into Best Buy, they gave me a credit card, and I built up my credit score buying it. I didn't say, holy shit, this is so anti-consumer. I can't believe Konami is putting this game that's a third-party game only on the PlayStation 3. I want it on my Xbox 360. I can't believe... No, it's business. In business, companies are going to do what's best suited for them. Companies are going to do what's going to generate them the most profit. We've we've developed this mindset. We've developed this relationship that's a very one-sided relationship with these companies because at the end of the day, these companies don't give a damn about you. They give a damn about their investors and they give a damn about their bottom line. Now, yes, they want to make consumers happy. They want to do things that they think consumers will like, but all because they do something that's a little bit against the grain, which wasn't really against the grain in history, it doesn't make them anti-consumer. It doesn't make them a bad company. You could make a case about Microsoft buying up all these studios. And that's that's sort of the crux of the conversation because everyone is saying that if Microsoft starts doing these games and, you know, even Sony themselves, you know, a game like Call of Duty, we can't compete with Call of Duty if it were to go as a console exclusive game. You can't compete. You can't compete. I'm sorry. I thought the whole point of the video game industry was, was competition. I thought the whole point of the video game industry was to strive to do better. And if someone is doing something better than you, you try to find a way to circumvent that. You try to find a way to combat that because competition makes for a, a better product. It makes for a better industry, a healthier industry, because now you have to come up with ideas. You have to think outside of the box. Not everything is just being handed to you from these third party developers. It seems like the whole conversation doesn't really revolve around first party exclusives though because that was something that a lot of people in the comments section of that video said because i just basically said you know you want to play a first party sony game you buy a playstation maybe a couple years you can play it on pc but you buy a playstation you want to play a gears of war or halo you buy an xbox you want to play mario or zelda you buy a nintendo product but people said no it's not about that it's about the third party exclusives. Okay, let's talk about how third parties work because I'm someone who's spoken with a ton of third parties throughout the years, especially back in my journalism days when I was doing Nintendo enthusiasts because there were a lot of things, you know, you would see, here's a company that comes to mind, Renegade Kid, who was uh, Jules Watchum's company. Um, and there was another guy there who uh, I believe passed away, RIP, his name escapes me right now. But Renegade Kid used to do games for the DS and like the 3DS, but we'll talk mostly about the D DS side of things. And you would have the Dementium games, which were awesome, Moon, which was awesome. But then they would also do these sort of contract games. You know, I believe they did a Razor Scooter game. And I thought to myself, well, why would they do that? You know, what's the point of, of doing something like that when, you know, you're making your own games and you're, you're pretty much master of your own domain, but it's about business. It's about business. Companies such as third-party companies will do things on their own time and make games that are available on everything. But then they also do contract work where a company that makes more money than them comes along and says, hey, we want such and such game on here. We want this sort of game on here. Can you do it for us? Can you? Can we hire you to create a game for our system that's not a multi-platform game? And then the company will either say yes or no, depending on the money, depending on the situation, depending on what they're doing, and then accept it. And then you have a game that maybe releases on only one platform and maybe if that game is successful down the road if there's not so any sort of you know exclusivity with the console the other companies come along and say hey we want this game too i 
How does that sound bad? How does that sound bad to anyone? How are console exclusives a bad thing? Console exclusives make you buy a platform. And you know, you might not like having to, to buy a Nintendo Switch to play a Super Mario Odyssey, but if that wasn't the case, if, if Nintendo was just a game developer and everyone was a game developer, what would be the point of having different systems? What would be the point of having anything like that? If you only have one console manufacturer and everyone's putting one game, uh, putting their games on one specific platform, do you realize how that would stifle creativity? Do you realize how that would stifle the entire video game industry? You would have dozens and dozens of games coming out a month and nothing would be able to survive. Nothing would be able to survive. Nothing. Nothing at all. Because all these games would be fighting each other. All these games. That's 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 too much competition. Okay? That's way too much competition. The average consumer only buys like what? Four or five games a year? And then you're going to have dozens and dozens of games coming out from top studios. Goodbye, indie studios, because no one's going to be playing your shit. No one's going to be paying attention to it because there's not going to be a reason to because you have all these bigger AAA games that are all coming out at once. Did people get upset? With Nintendo hiring Platinum Games to, to make uh, Astral Chain, Bayonetta, was, was that a big situation? No. You want to play Bayonetta, Nintendo is helping fund it. You want to play Astral Chain, Nintendo is helping fund it. It's the exact same thing that's happening with these other third-party games. All because Call of Duty is now owned by Microsoft. And like I said, you can make a case for the whole situation about buying up these other companies and potentially making a monopoly and you know i would listen to that i i would listen to that but it seems like people don't want to advance beyond that they don't want to advance beyond that in this conversation the the, the crux of the conversation is i have such and such platform and it's bs that this game is not coming out on this platform because somebody else owns it how does that not sound like the most entitled whiny baby thing in the world like i want this i want it now i don't want to have to buy something else you know let's just let's just never advance let's never advance in video games and everything should be able to run on an nes i still own an nes why isn't such and such game on there why isn't this company making a game for this do, like do, do you get it if you only had one company making one thing and that one thing was available on every freaking thing in the world that would stifle creativity that would stifle the industry that would stifle businesses like think like by that mentality okay let's just have one rapper let's just have one musician let's just have one movie studio because this one movie studio is making this certain movie maybe the other studio wanted to make this movie too how's that fair to them you see what i'm saying like i i, I just i don't get it i understand a lot of this newer generation wants a, a life of kumbaya and it, you know it's always been like that but with things like the rise of social media like i said everyone can have an opinion and if you find a bunch of people that have like-minded opinions with you then you sort of create this this you know this little echo chamber where where nothing can penetrate the echo chamber life sucks all right life sucks it's full of problems and heartaches and struggles wear a helmet you know all because console exclusives exist if anything console exclusives are what drives the video game industry to hit higher regions it's what drives the video game industry to do better because it gives you an incentive to play on a certain platform i don't care if it's a first party exclusive i don't care if it's a third party exclusive guess what kids money talks money is what makes the world go round and the more money you have the more things you can do you might like it you might hate it but you have to accept it your feelings on that subject don't negate the facts of the subject and the fact of the matter is if you're making money you could do more things if you're losing money you have to reconsider your business strategy so i don't know man i, don't, I feel like i went all over the place with this but i keep i just keep seeing it console exclusives they're bad they're ruining the video game industry they're anti-consumer not everything is about you consumer not everything is about you you are the person consuming the product, okay? If you don't like something, that doesn't necessarily mean it's evil and bad and it's this, that, and the other. It's just not for you. It, it, it's not It's not directed to you. So how does that make it bad? How does that make someone, you know, because they don't understand why somebody has this mentality, you know, an ist or an ism or a, a phobia or, or something like that. You can respect people with not understanding their, their mentality on, on a subject and that's what the world needs now you know respect other people at the end of the day you, no matter what as jesus christ we're getting way off topic here no matter what race religion 
creed, sexual orientation. It doesn't fucking matter. At the end of the day, we all bleed blood. Okay, we all bleed the same blood. There's different blood types, but we all bleed blood. We're all humans at the end of the day. We're all just trying to get by and trying to survive. And that's what the video game industry is trying to do. It's trying to become greater. It's trying to become a bigger thing. And console exclusives are helping drive that. Console exclusives are helping create a medium where people can take more risks and people can take more, you know, and create more greater experiences or else we would still be stuck in the stone age. It might hurt your feelings, but don't let the facts get in the way of it. All right. I'm just going to shut the hell up because I've probably already pissed off a lot of people. Goodbye.